Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Prakriti Khemka. I am currently pursuing my second year in radio diagnosis from Maharishi Markandeshwar University, Mulana. The title of my study is a case report on radiological findings in glomus jugular tumor. The glomus tumor is most common benign neoplasm of the middle ear and is so named because of its origin from the glomus bodies. Glomus bodies resemble carotid body in structure and are found in the dome of the jugular bulb on the promontory along the course of the tympanic branch of the ninth cranial nerve that is the Jacobson's nerve. The tumor consists of paraganglionic cells derived from the neural crest. The tumor is often seen in middle age from 40 to 50 years and females are affected five times more than males. It is a benign, encapsulated, extremely vascular and slow-growing tumor, which is locally invasive. There are two types of glomus tumors, glomus jugular and glomus tympanicum. The glomus jugular arises from the dome of the jugular bulb and invades the hypotympanum and the jugular foramen, causing 9th to 12th cranial nerve involvement. They may compress the jugular vein or invade its lumen. The glomus tympanicum arises from the promontory of the middle ear and causes oral symptoms, sometimes with facial paralysis. The aim of the study is to describe role of CCT in the diagnosis of glomus jugular tumor. A case study was done on a 70-year-old female who presented to our department for an outpatient appointment for left ear pain since one year associated with hearing loss and tingling sensation. She also complained of left-sided headache on and off, which was increasing in severity over the past few months and was relieved by analgesics. Neural examination was normal without any sensory or motor deficit and routine blood and urine investigations were within the normal limits. On otoendoscopy, a reddish polypoidal pulsatile mass was seen in the left middle ear as seen in the image attached here and the right ear was normal. Given the patient's complaints and results of investigations, she was referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis for contrast enhanced CT scan of the temporal bone. On CCT temporal bone, left ear showed an lobulated and heterogeneously enhancing soft tissue density mass lesion seen epicentered at the left jugular fossa, causing its widening with permeative pattern of bony erosions in the adjacent part of the petromystoid temporal bone, the mass measured approximately 23 into 17 into 17 mm in maximal dimensions and the right ear was normal. This is a contrast enhanced scan of the temporal bone in axial section. The soft tissue window shows evidence of an intensely, intensely enhancing lesion in the left jugular fossa. Interiorly, the erosion of the posterior inferior aspect of the carotid canal and with abutment of the junction of cervical and petra segment of left ICA is seen. In the bone window, axial section anterolaterally, there is erosion of the posterior wall of the hypotympanum with, with the extension of the mass lesion into the middle ear, into the hypotympanum, mesotympanum and epitympanum and the adjacent medial part of the left ex external auditory canal. There is also non-enhancing opacification of the mastoid ear cells on the left side. On the coronal section, the lesion is seen to minimally extend beyond the base of the skull for a length of approximately 9 mm. On conclusion, there is evidence of a well-defined, intensely enhancing lesion in the left jugular fossa with erosions and extensions as described. Provisional diagnosis was left glomus jugular tumor and secondary left mastoiditis. Differential diagnosis include jugular schwannoma, bony metastasis, meningioma, jugular bulb thrombosis and endolymphatic sac tumor. Final diagnosis of glomus jugular paraganglioma was confirmed by characteristic histological findings. The epidemiology of jugular tumors is that they are seen in adults between 40 to 60 years of age with moderate female predilection. 
defined according to the location that is the origin at the jugular foramen rather than the anatomic origin and may arise from the jacobson nerve arnold nerve or the jugular bulb 10% may have multiple lesions locally infiltrating tumors may rarely metastasize CT helps to distinguish glomus tympanicum from the glomus jugular tumor by identification of the keratico jugular spine which is eroded in the latter. CT can also help to differentiate from the aberrant carotid artery, high or dehiscent jugular bulb. MRI gives soft tissue extent of the tumor. Salt and pepper appearance is seen on both T1 and T2 weighted images. MRI and MRV further help to delineate invasion of the jugular bulb and vein or compression of the carotid artery. The treatment and prognosis. Surgery is the treatment of choice. Complications include cranial nerve deficits, CSF or endolymphatic leak. Although most of the cervical paragangliomas are considered relatively radio resistant, base of skull paragangliomas are radio sensitive and thus large inoperable tumors or tumors in elderly and frail patients are often treated with radiotherapy. Recurrence and local invasion are common. These are my references. Thank you.